The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold! Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. With King in the lead, Sergeant Preston urged his dog team up the frozen stretches of Rainbow Creek. The light had faded from the sky, and a full moon was rising as he stepped on the brake and called to the Huskies to stop in front of Jim Crossman's cabin. Hulking! Oh, Hello, you Huskies! Run out! Hello! Who's there? Preston, Jim. One King. Well, Sergeant, welcome. Hiya, King. You'll stay the night, won't you? Aren't you going to unharness your team? Well, that depends, Jim. Let's have a talk first. Oh. Okay. Over here by the stove, where it's a little warmer. Oh, you've made some changes. Oh, just cut a few windows. Oil paper, you'll notice. No glass yet. <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. I uh, got your message this morning, Jim. And you came right up. The Northwest Mounted Police sure give service. We try to. But I just meant for you to drop in if you were heading this way. You wanted to see me, and I wanted to see you. Oh. What about? My business can wait. What's on your mind? Uh... This note, an Indian brought it to me yesterday. Uh -huh. Printed. Yeah, no signature. If you want to live, get out of the Yukon. Hmm. Did you know the Indian? No, never saw him before. Did you find out who gave him the note? Someone in a Dawson cafe. Oh, his description would fit half the men in town. Where'd the Indian go? Up into the hills. Be hard to find him. But I know who's responsible. Huh? Who? Well, I don't want to make any accusation. Not yet. Who do you think's responsible? Brad Walker. He's spending the winter in Dawson. A note came from Dawson. Sergeant Brad owns the upstream claim right next to mine. He started working it just above the boundary late last summer. That's when all of you filed your claim here, wasn't it? Yeah. Neither my brother Chick nor I liked Brad, so we started near our south boundary. Mm. Just keeping as much distance as possible between us, you understand? I understand. Well, in less than two weeks, Brad made us an offer for our claim. We just laughed at him. And he raised the offer, so we laughed some more. But it was easy enough to figure it out. He'd hit a good vein, and he could see it was getting larger that hit our property. Mm. So he wanted it, naturally. He still wants it. You, uh, you believe that Walker's trying to scare you into selling? Yeah, of course. But he doesn't have a chance. And you're telling me this because you want... Not protection, Sergeant. I can take care of myself. I just want you to know that if I have to put a bullet through Brad Walker, it won't be because of any fault of my own. Better let the law handle this, Jim. <laughs> yeah. You have to say that, don't you? I mean it. Well, the Yukon's a big territory. Can't be too many you Mounties. Can't be every place. That's true. And I think you can be depended on not to start any trouble. You have my word for it, Sergeant. You say that you can take care of yourself. Well, how about Chick? Can he? Why not? Well, he's younger than you are, and Sure, he... sure, and wild as they come. But I'd back him against Brad Walker any day. How long has it been since you've seen him? Well, I haven't been in Dawson since Christmas. Hey, now, did you want to talk to me about Chick? Did something happen to him? He was in jail the night before last. Uh, what for? Oh, just a fight. I pulled him out of it and gave him a chance to cool off. Raisin King, huh? He does his best. You know... I think it might be a good idea if you had a talk with him, Jim. It'd be better if you could persuade him to come back here with you. Yeah, not much chance, though. Well, as you say, we Mounties can't be everywhere. I'm going back to town tonight, Jim. Well, I'll come with you. Good. <laughs> oh, what's the matter, King? Sit down, Jim. I am. That was a rifle. I know. And when you stood up, your shadow was right against the window. It's all right, King. If you hadn't been over to Pat King, the bullet would have... Yeah, look. Smacked through the center. King knew someone was outside there. You can reach the lamp, Jim. Blow it out. Okay. Now what? Now we investigate. Keep to the shadow of the cabin when we get outside. The moon's bright. Jim. Yeah? Up the slope. 
Someone dust one into Walker's cabin. Did you make out who it was? No, I couldn't even make out what kind of a parker he was wearing. There's a light. If it was Walker who tried it... We'll find out. Come on, King. You're covered. Drop that rifle. Sure. What's your name? Ben Martin. What are you doing here? Brad Walker hired me to come up and have a look at the place to see if everything was all right. And incidentally, to take a shot at me. A shot at? I don't know what you're talking about. Hand me the rifle, Jim. Yeah. Here you are. Thanks. Hmm. Just been fired. Do you deny you fired through the window of Jim's cabin a moment ago? Why, well, sure do. I... Hey, you mean the bullet went through his window? It was a bullseye. Oh, officer, I swear it was an accident. Let me tell you about it. Go right ahead. Well, I thought I heard a wolf. I took my rifle and went out to have a look. I walked up to the top of the knoll, and just as I got to the top, I, I stumbled. Well, you know how it is in a case like that. I, I pulled the trigger. It was an accident. I had no idea where the bullet went. Well, you believe me, don't you? I'm going to take you back to headquarters. Well, what for? It was just an accident. Besides, I didn't hit anybody. You can't arrest me. You'll be held for questioning. After all, we must make sure that Brad Walker sent you up here. Come on, King. It was 12 o'clock, early evening for Dawson, but the narrow back streets of the town were dark. Eddie Conlon, his pointed features buried in the collar of his parka, hurried toward Brad Walker's cabin. He stopped before the door, looked up and down the street, and then slipped inside. Walker rose to meet him, a big man, black bearded, his black eyes blazing with anger. What are you doing here? Now take it easy, Brad. I gave you orders to I know, but something's happened. Where's the cause? It's the palace. He got in the stud game with that crew from 40 Mile, and he's still at it. Where's Marie? Waiting for him at the gold nugget. Now listen to me. I just saw Ben drive into town. He's come back here? Sergeant Preston was with him. Preston, huh? Someday I'll wring that muddy's neck. Cut Ben, huh? He took him to headquarters. Now, wait a minute. Jim Crossman was with him, too. He didn't put it off there, He may have tried to. Preston gave me a message for you. He wants to see you at the headquarters right away. Yeah. You think Ben could have talked any? If he had, Preston wouldn't ask me to come to headquarters. He'd come after me. No, Ben wouldn't dare open his mouth. Well, I don't trust him. I wouldn't either if I couldn't put a rope around his neck any time I wanted to. This don't change our plans any. With him back in town? You get back to Marie and tell her to start working on Chick. Yeah, but he's at the palace. Tell her to go after him. Drag him out of the game and get him over to the nugget. She does things her own way. Tell her to have him there in an hour. All right. What about you? Me? I'm going to find out how much Preston knows. How much good he thinks it'll do him. Hello, Sergeant. Sit down, Walker. Yeah. Easy, King. Easy, boy. <laughs> you ought to shoot that muddy's dangerous. Some people, yeah. Well, the big crossman. What's the matter? Too lonesome for you up on the creek? Oh, the company's better than it was last summer. Getting worse around here. How long do you plan to stay in town, Sergeant? Until the inspector gets back. I hope he gets back soon. Huh? I'll bet. <laughs> Eddie says you got Ben Martin here. That's right. We're holding him for questioning. What's he been up to? We found him in your cabin on Rainbow Creek. Well, that's okay. I sent him up there and gave him the key. He was just looking around for me. That I believe. See, the neighborhood isn't so good. I figured something might be stolen. Well... Well, what? If you haven't got anything else against him, aren't you going to turn him loose now? No, not yet. But you've taken care of the breaking and entering charge, and that's all the information we wanted from you now. Thanks for dropping in, Walker. <laughs> Are you sure there aren't any more questions? Not tonight. <laughs> okay, then. <clears throat> Take care of yourself, Crossman. And don't forget you're in a big, bad city. How long can you hold, Martin, Sergeant? Not long, Jim. But perhaps long enough to worry Brad Walker. Perhaps even long enough to make him show his hand. I hope. 
You turning in now? No, Jim. If anything goes wrong in Dawson, it's always between now and morning. I'm going to finish up a little work here, and then King and I will make a tour of inspection. Well, I'm going to try and find Chick. Any suggestions? Well, you might try the gold nugget if the girl works there. Girl? Yes, her name's Marie. Well, that's news to me. I'll take a look. Oh, uh, just remember, Jim, Walker's advice wasn't bad. Be careful. Sure. Good night, Sergeant. Good night. Good night, King. Jim's younger brother, Chick, was a great favorite in Dawson. Half the man on the gold nugget called out a greeting as he shouldered his way through the crowd toward the end of the bar, where Murray was waiting for him. Hi, Bill. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> oh, hello, baby. Hello, Sheik. Oh, you're cute. Oh, it sure makes me laugh to hear you say my name. But it is a good word in French. You are Sheik, right? I'll take your word for it. Look, baby. Good news. What? Gold. I want it all from those 40-mile boys. Sacre bleu. It must be close to a thousand dollars. More. Oh, that ought to last me for a while, shouldn't it? If I know you, it will last until tomorrow morning. <laughs> Mon petit are no good. <laughs> all right. So let's forget about it and have a good time. It is your lucky night, I think. All around, baby. Now, let's stand. Wait. There's Brad Walker over there. Who cares? I have not liked the way he has laughed at you for not playing poker with him. Ah, forget about him. And you are right not to risk any part of your claim on gambling. But tonight you have money. You are lucky. I would like you to take all his money away from him. Is that an order, baby? We. Oui. All right, then. Here we go. Hello, Chick. Jim. Why, you old owl face, it's good to see you. Comb the icicles out of your eyebrows and have a drink. No, thanks. Marie, this is my brother. Jim, meet Marie. She's the girl I'm going to marry. Is that so? Pardon. Do not pay too much attention. <laughs> it is news to me. So what brings you to Dawson, Jim? You? Yeah? I yes, you. You are a bad boy. I've always been a bad boy. And he gave up trying to be a good influence a long time ago. Didn't you, Jim? I'm going to start again. Oh, <laughs> no, you're not. Kind of late, Chick. You've had enough to drink. Ah, you're getting old. This is just the shank of the evening. I want you to come back to your cabin with me. It's important. Well, it can wait until tomorrow, can no, it? Oh, I don't think so. Now, look, there's no two ways about this. I'm going to make you come with me. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, she is older than you. He knows what is best. I decide that for myself. Come on, now. Take your hands off me. Okay. I'll wait for you in the cabin. You better not. I'll be late and I'll wake you up when I come home. You better get a room at the palace. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. I'll see you in the morning. Oh, he is right and you are wrong. As usual. Forget it. Nobody's going to treat me like a kid. Not even Jim. Not even Brad Walker? No. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. We'll get some of his money. Here you are, Chief. Have another drink before you draw. Thanks, baby. Oh, if this is my lucky day, it must be tomorrow. My luck's certainly gone. You will do better. How many cards? Uh, two. Two it is. What about you? I'm standing pat. Uh, well, let's see. <laughs> Coming out with a hundred. You're a hundred and another hundred. Too bad I can't do any more than call. There's your hundred. And here's a beautiful full house. Aces over kings. <laughs> I only have deuces, Chick. Oh, oh, oh. But uh, there's four of them. What? <laughs> and weep. Oh, yeah. Four deuces, baby. Oh, that cleans me. How about your claim? I'll be glad to lend you money on it. No, thanks. I, I, I may be groggy, but I still got sense to, Enough sense not to... Not to fall for any of that stuff. I, I know what you... Oh. Hey, he's out. I got him. What time, Marie? You wanted him to remember losing all his money, didn't yeah, you? I could have taken him sooner. You sure the brothers to the palace? Yeah, I checked. Then we take him to his cabin. You fix up a paper with his own pen and ink, Eddie. Yeah. And cards and a bottle or two on the table to make it look like there'd been a big game. 
You come along with us, Marie. You can help. Oui, oui, as you say so. I'll give you a hand with him. We'll take him out the back way. It was nearly dawn when King and Sergeant Preston started back toward headquarters. King whimpered, and then taking the bottom of the sergeant's parka in his mouth, gently pulled him to a stop. What's the matter, boy? We've been down that street. Oh, I see. Someone needs help in getting home. Friend of yours, King? Well, if you think there's something wrong, so do I. Let's go. Chick Crossman was wakened the next morning by a knock on the door of his cabin. He was lying on his cot, fully dressed. His head throbbed, but he swung his feet to the floor and stood up. He staggered as he reached the table and leaned on it for support. Cards, bottles, an open bottle of ink, a pen. He shook his head and then took the few remaining steps to the door. Hello. I have come to make you some coffee. Oh, wonderful, baby. Come on in. You can put some wood in the stove. All right. You do not look so good. I don't feel so good. Now, what happened last night? Your luck did not hold. You lost all your money. I sort of remember that. What happened afterwards? How'd I get home? You came home with Brad and Eddie. What? I came too, but there was no use in that. You would not listen to me. I brought Brad and Eddie here. Oui. You insisted that the game must go on. But I didn't have any money. You put up your share of the claim against $10,000. No, I couldn't have. No? There is the open ink bottle and the pen with which the quit claim was signed. And I... I lost the claim. You do not add it, do you? I... I don't know. I will answer for you. You do not have it. As I was coming here, I saw Walker go into the registry office to file your claim. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I, I don't remember. Perhaps it will come back to you after you have some coffee. I don't want it to come back. I don't want to believe it. What have I done, Marie? I tell you. This means I'm out. Brad is Jim's partner. He owns half of our claim. We? Oh, I don't care so much for myself, not the money part of it. But I've double-crossed Jim, and, and I've double-crossed you, me? Well, sure. I've always told you that when I started taking gold out of the claim, well, this summer you and I'd get married. You have always laughed when you said that. It was a joke. It may have been a joke to you, but it wasn't to me. I have never laughed when you said it. You mean you would have? I would have. We. Oui. Oh, no use talking about it now. I'll have to go prospecting again. Maybe Jim or Grubbs take me, but... You do a lot better to kick me out. How can I face him? You are in no condition to face anyone right now. When the coffee is ready, drink some, and then go back to sleep. You're leaving? Oui. I don't blame you. It is not like that. I kiss you, mon ami. For goodbye, huh? It is a little goodbye. Had you grown so sentimental that a little goodbye seems to be a little death? <laughs> Drink the coffee and you will feel better. Marie hesitated for a moment outside the cabin. Then she turned away from the center of town and walked a few blocks to Brad Walker's cabin. Without knocking, she opened the door and walked in. Hey, what the... It is only me. Don't ever come in like that again. Next time, maybe you'll stab a bullet. There will not be a next time. I see you are out of jail, Ben. Yeah, the police didn't have anything on him. Because he failed to kill Jim. It was just bad luck. And it was Preston I'd have got if he hadn't been over when I shot. What do you think of that? I think you talk too much. Yes, you're uh, right. Uh, you chick believe your story? Oui. That's great. Now, this is the way it works from now on. Eddie, you and me and Ben start for the rainbow at noon. We'll need supplies and a team. You'll have time to get them. You and Ben will hide out in my cabin. I'll break into Jim's. As soon as he gets back, he'll try to throw me out. But I expect you boys to be on hand. Sure. We'll be there. And this time, I don't want you to miss. We won't. <laughs> I'll see I shot him. 
the law won't be able to touch me. I have a legal right to be in the cabin, and I kill him in self-defense when he drew a gun. <laughs> this does not interest me. You're in it just as much as we are. My work is done, and I wish to be paid off. One thousand in gold. Why not? I'll pay you off with what I want from Chick last night. Want me to weigh it out? No, I know the amount is right. You can give it to me in the bag that Chick gave to you. He might recognize it. That is very funny. Do you imagine there will be anything between him and me now? <laughs> he gets the air, huh? However you want to put it. The gold, please. Hey, uh... Merci. From where do you leave? The nugget. I will see you there to say goodbye. But Marie went straight to police headquarters. She talked with Sergeant Preston for half an hour, and as she talked, he wrote. Finally, and you're willing to testify to this? Oui. That Walker hired Ben Martin to kill Jim Crossman, that Eddie Conlon forged Chick Crossman's name to the quitclaim deed, that Walker, with knowledge of the forgery, filed the deed, that the three of them are now planning murder and will make it seem to be a killing in self-defense. I will testify to everything I have said. It is the truth. I warn you again, this makes you an accessory. I will testify. Then sign here, please. Now, uh, tell me, why have you done this? The reason is personal. It is also unimportant. You're now, in love with Chick, aren't you? What difference? He will never speak to me again when he finds out. Well, I can only say that as a witness for the Crown, you may expect some lenience. <laughs> King's a witness for the crown, too. King? He made me follow you when you took Chick Crossman to his cabin last night. I saw everything that happened inside. But you could not see. There's a paper at the window. There's a hole in the paper now. I saw Chick lying on the cot. I saw Eddie commit the forgery. I heard everything that was said. Then why did you not do something? I was a witness to a conspiracy. Since Walker's registered the deed, it's become a crime. And now that you've come forward, the three of them can be charged with attempted murder. You will arrest them? Yes. By the way... They intend to leave from the nugget at noon. This time... But, Sergeant... Yes? Walker hates you. Do not give him an opportunity to shoot first. You think he might resist arrest? I am sure of it. And Ben, he is wanted for something else in Alberta. And Eddie, he is a little rat. Resist? I am sure they will. I may give them a chance. But why? Because our job up here is more than enforcing the law, Marie. We must make the Northwest Mounted Police and the law respected. To do that, sometimes we have to take chances. Right, King? (coughs) Right. (coughs) At a quarter of twelve in the morning, the gold nugget was only partly filled. When Sergeant Preston entered with Chick and Jim Crossman, they spotted Walker and Martin standing at the bar. King growled. Yes, boy, just take it easy. Now remember, Jim, you too, Chick. I've let you come with me, but I have your promise that you'll keep out of this. All right, Sergeant. Eddie isn't here. He will be. We won't wait for him. Walker, Martin, I arrest you in the name of the Queen. It's Preston. What did you say? You're under arrest. And I warn you that anything you say may be used against you. What's the charge? Grand larceny, forgery, and attempted murder. Yeah. You got any proof? The court will decide that. You're coming with me. With a gun in my ribs, what choice do I have? You know, I've always said you muddies ought to change your uniform. Isn't that right, boys? They should have a yellow streak right down the back of that red coat. Hand over your gun. (laughs) Sure. Take charge of this, Jim. Right, Sergeant. I've got it. Now yours, Martin. Here. Here, Jim. Now you can take mine. What? Take it. Why, sure, but what's the idea? He's pretending he's a big, brave man. What's the difference whether you got a gun or not, Sergeant, as long as your friends got him? Don't shoot, Jim, under any circumstances. That's an order. You mean this is just between you and me? No. Ben's included. Stick out your hands while I put these cuffs on them. All right, Ben. Let's accommodate the sergeant. 
Like this? Give it to Brad, Sergeant. I got Ben covered. After his first crashing blow, Brad Walker tried desperately to close with Preston. He outweighed the Mountie by nearly 40 pounds and was determined to reduce the fight to a rough and tumble one where sheer brute strength must win. But the sergeant evaded his bear-like rushes or drove them back with rapier right and left. Steady, King, steady. The sergeant's doing all right. I'll say he is. Give it to him. But just then, the red-coated Mountie lost his footing. Walker forced him back against the table, his great paws grasping for Preston's throat. The table collapsed beneath their weight. Preston rolled free. He was on his feet again. Again, Walker charged. A solid right cracked against his jaw. He staggered back, and at that moment... Sergeant, behind you, there's Eddie Conlon. Look out, he's got a gun. As Eddie raised his gun, prepared to shoot the Mountie in the back, the great dog King leaped at him. Conlon was knocked to the floor. The gun fell from his hand, and King growled a menace at his throat. Preston moved in on Walker. A left, another right. Walker reeled backwards, clutched at the air, and fell. There. That finishes him, Sergeant. I oh, you sure laid him low. Oh, Sergeant, All right, King. Good work, boy. Get up, Conlon. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. You, Martin, pick up your partner. The three of you are heading for jail. After the trial was over and Walker, Martin, and Conlon had been convicted on all charges, Marie and Chick Crossman met in Sergeant Preston's office. Marie, the sergeant said I could talk to you for a minute. We are almost ready to start. I know. Just the same... He is taking me to jail. What is there to talk about? You'll be back here before the end of next summer. I do not think I will come back to the Yukon. But you've got to. What for? For me, baby. Uh, she... After what has happened, surely... Yes, surely. Oh, I... I admit I don't like the fact that you played me for a sap. Even if I was one and had it coming to me. But what you've done since makes all the difference. I want you to come back here and... And marry me. Sheik. Quiet, King. Sorry, but we'll have to get started, Marie. I am ready. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, Sheik. King, do you notice that Marie is smiling? <laughs> I will tell you, King. I am very, very happy. And I think that you and the sergeant will be invited to a wedding next August. Oh. Oh, do you not approve, King? Why, of course he does. All he said was, case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is a George W. Trendle production brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Robert Herrick, the Elizabethan poet, tells us to gather our rosebuds while we may. That old time is always a-flying. Well, Mr. Herrick has a point there, and we're going to adapt it to radio. In fact, to one specific show, Roth Dolan Detective, which is presented every Saturday night over most of these ABC stations. If you've been missing out on the thrills this program brings listeners, be sure to start tonight to listen in. As the hero of Roth Dolan Detective, William Gargan, popular screen actor, plays the tough and terrific private eye, Roth Dolan. The old saying, he has a way with him, certainly fits Roth like a glove. For he does have a way with him, with gangsters and gals alike. With Mr. Herrick's little saying in mind, plan to be on hand when Ross Dolan Detective goes on the air tonight and every Saturday night.